Hey guys, how are we? I'm Tris, and today I'm going to be reviewing 3000 of Jewel for the Nintendo Switch. Let's jump into that review today. 3000 of Jewel is an action-adventure game with Soulsborne inspiration, which was developed and published by Neo Popcorn. This is coming to the Nintendo Switch on the 19th of February. In 3000 of Jewel, you play as a hero with no memory, only flashbacks to your past. But throughout your journey, you will discover who you are by obtaining lost memories, like this memory of a queen that mentions a dedicated and respected queen who was poisoned. Playing through 3000 of Jewel, you will also encounter NPCs, like this cloaked spectre which explains that you're not the only one who has lost their memory, and that there were plenty before you, leading myself to believe that there's something sinister happening and you're not the first. Using ZL to show the map, the goal of each area is to find the boss. Often I ended up exploring the full area before moving onwards to make sure that I found all the loot and get as much karma as possible. Now, when you defeat an enemy in 3000 Duel, you'll receive karma, which is used to level up your stats at a level up statue, which to me was really fun, and that's what links it to a Soulsborne game. Now, the four upgradable stats are Vitality, Strength, Mind, and Activity. Vitality increasing your health points, Strength, which increases your attack, Mind, which increases your mana points, and increases the damage dealt by Mortal Blow and Occult Spells, and Activity, which increases your stamina, which means you're going to be able to dash more frequently. Also, save statues. These are generally found together through each area and they will always be found together with a level up statue after defeating a boss. Depending on how you normally play a game like this, you will level up your stats that fit your playstyle. For myself, I focused on strength a lot as I enjoyed using weapons for damage and I enjoyed doing stupid amounts of damage on every hit. While I'm on the subject of weapons though, let's talk about them. There are multiple classes of weapons to use in this game. Whether it's a sword, broadsword or more, there's something for everyone including spells if you're someone that normally plays a mage class, which comes under the form of the occult class. Equipment is also found throughout the game, like necklaces and rings which can buff defense, attack and more. Both weapons and equipment are found either in chests or as monster drops, which can occasionally happen. There also is another way to increase survivability in 3000 for Jewel, which is through sealed skills. Now, seal breaker stones are needed to unlock these special upgrades, which are normally obtained through leveling up. Some examples of sealed skills are increased defense and invincibility while dashing. For my own playthrough of the game, as soon as I unlocked a soul breaker stone, I immediately upgraded whatever I could that was going to benefit my class, which made the game so much easier for me. While wandering the lands in this game, you'll also find core skills, which are generally needed to progress through to new areas. Now, the charge blow skill was definitely something that helped take down stronger foes. Essentially, you hold down an attack button, charge up that skill, and when you're ready, you unleash it to deal devastating amounts of damage. Consumables are something else that can be found along your journey, like karma fragments and strength potions, which respectively give karma or increase strength. These are generally found in chess. Now, boss-wise, when you encounter a boss for the first time, a cutscene occurs showing the boss jumping out and preparing for battle. Generally, the bosses weren't too difficult, but still took three to four tries on average to defeat them, which is really good for myself since I do like that challenge with a boss. Once you beat a boss as well, you get a new spell and access to a new area where you can find core skill to help you progress, keys for areas, and violet scripture, which are used to replenish health. Now, violet scriptures get replenished alongside your health at save statues. Visual-wise, at first I wasn't a big fan of the graphics, but over time they grew on me. The environments look stunning. Weapons and spells looked equally badass. I really enjoyed the look of them. The characters, including enemies, looked very appealing too. I was rather surprised about how much I liked the visuals after I actually spent some time playing the game. I particularly enjoyed the Blue Stones cave, especially in the puzzle-solving mushroom room. I really liked the bright glow, almost neonish, from the mushroom area. It was really interesting for myself, and I like that they put these little areas in the game. Now, audio-wise, there was great audio, especially the music in the Demoted Rider boss fight. That fight's music was epic. In terms of how it made you feel while you were fighting the boss, the sound effects are great as well, they really fit in with the game. The only downside I have to the audio was sometimes when the tracks looped, it was very sudden with its restart. But overall, the audio was great. Today I'm going to be rating 3000 of Jewel 4.5 out of 5. There were beautiful visuals, brilliant audio, the only letdown was that loop restart that I mentioned earlier. This game was really hard to put down for myself. I found myself having so much fun in the game and I didn't want to stop playing it. <laughs> also in regards to price, I think it's a really good price point and it's going to make it accessible for so many gamers. Seriously, 
buy the game if you have the money, especially if you like those Soulsborne games. It's not as hard as them, but it's a really great introduction to that style of gameplay, and I really enjoyed it regardless. Anyways, I hope today's reviews helped you decide whether or not you're going to buy the game, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video today, as I really enjoyed filming it and recording it, and everything else that goes into producing these. Also, if you liked the video, please let me know if there's anything you want to talk about in the video, if there's any other games that you want me to actually look into, please comment down below. And also, please subscribe so that you can keep up to date with Nintendo Switch content, I'm also trying to decide whether or not I'm going to be streaming the Nintendo Direct whenever that is because I'm sure there's going to be one in the next few weeks. I kind of got duped on the uh, fake news with a Nintendo Direct, but oh well! I'm going to make sure that I actually look at the Twitter handles properly before I retweet them. Also, I really want to say a quick thank you to Neo Popcorn for sending myself a copy of this game. It really helps me continue reviewing games and I had a lot of fun with it. Anyways guys, I'm Tris, or the official Phantom TV, and I hope to catch you in the future with another Nintendo Switch review. See you then.